Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to another Kids Connection. My name is Audrey, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through different songs, activities, and Bible stories. I am so happy that you guys have decided to join us today. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new Kids Connection program. And if you're a regular, welcome back. I'm always happy to see you guys here. Today is a hot summer day. I hope you guys are enjoying your summer, you're enjoying the hot weather, maybe you get to go outdoors sometimes with mom and dad, or maybe you get to enjoy the pool and a little bit of the beach. I've seen some pictures of parents traveling on Facebook and on social media, and I hope that you are one of them that get to travel and get to do something fun this summer. Right now, we're going to have some fun in our Kids Connection program, listening to our story. And what a better way to start our program today than singing our song of the day. So I invite you guys to sing it with us because there's only one true God. What a great way to start our program today, singing the song, One True God. I hope you guys had fun singing the song. Now I invite you to bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another Sabbath and another Kids Connection program. We ask that you be with us today as we worship your name. Be with all the boys and girls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Close your eyes. Eyes shut, don't open. Can you get to the kitchen without opening your eyes? Can you go to mom's car without opening your eyes? Without crashing into things? Are you able to go to school with your eyes closed? Can you go to church with your eyes closed? It, it's hard, isn't it? We would not be able to do all these things with our eyes closed because we just can't see it. Go ahead and open your eyes. That's much better, isn't it? Okay, so what does this have to do with what we're talking about right now? Right now? It has to do with our mission story. Our mission story today is about a woman, her husband, and a dog. Let's watch our mission story and see what happens to Nina and Fargo.
Nina does what most dog owners do. She takes her dog out for a walk every day to enjoy the outside air. But things are a little different for Nina. She relies on Fargo to get her out the door and around the neighborhood safely. He's her guide dog, helping Nina navigate the streets. Nina and her husband, Kevin, are both blind, living in a Toronto high-rise apartment building. This Canadian couple lives in many ways, just like anyone else would. They cook, clean, and do household tasks. Nina runs an online business, selling handmade knitted clothing, homemade soaps, and other accessories. Each of these things are an artistic outlet for me. I do the store because I like to have fun with crafts. Nina and Kevin met at Camp Frenda, an Adventist summer camp that opens its doors to the blind community for one week each year. It was sponsored by Christian Record Services at the time. Nina and Kevin's love for Jesus grew, and they both were baptized. During the same time, they fell in love and eventually got married. Despite becoming part of a church family, the reality of their daily challenges still exist. I think a lot of people just don't know how to relate to us, and a lot of people are afraid to even talk to us. And so sometimes they just don't know how to approach us as, as people. And uh, a lot of times we feel left out. In 2007, they were part of the founding team to start a new Adventist congregation with the Ontario Conference. They rented a conference room in a local hotel in Scarborough, a suburb of Toronto, and began meeting once a month. This gathering came to be known as Hope Vision Fellowship and was designed to welcome the blind community. Momentum built over the years, and they formed a core group with new visitors coming through the doors regularly. There's a lot of hopelessness throughout the blind community. I like the name of our church, Hope Vision Fellowship. And that's basically what we are. We hope and we do have a vision. And our vision is to see blind people get saved. And if the blind people come to know Jesus Christ and find healing and hope through His wonderful grace. In 2016, Global Mission helped to support this group. And that same year, Hope Vision Fellowship was recognized as the first Adventist church for the visually impaired in the North American division. Since then, they've started meeting in their own church building, opening the door for more possibilities. Members like Kevin and Nina are actively involved in sharing Jesus' love with the blind community. There are a lot of blind people that really need this hope, and they need, they need this nice time away from their stuff that they deal with every day, and they need sort of a, a slight refuge. And that's my heart where I want to make people help them feel that way, like they matter. Most of the people who attend are not Adventist, but come because they feel safe here. They come from different religions and socioeconomic backgrounds. This congregation is not just focused on meeting the spiritual needs of its community. They also are aware of the physical needs. Pat, one of the founding members, make sure that people are well taken care of by creating food care packages for people to take home. As most of them can't afford some of the basic necessities of life, let alone a little bit extra, and some of them have to rely on food banks anyway, so this is one of our reaches as well. I mean, this is sometimes the only way of getting their food. Knowing some of the stories of, of some of the ones going to actual food banks um, they get pushed to the back, they can't see, they don't know what they are. And the one time I was helping a girl um, clean out her cupboard and she had 25 cans of expired spaghetti sauce and no spaghetti. So this is just helping. Thanks to your prayers and contribution to Global Mission, churches like this are planted in new areas and among unreached people groups. I want to thank God from the bottom of my heart for the Adventist Church. It was through the Adventist Church that I found Jesus. It was through the Adventist Church that I experienced His love. And it's through the Adventist Church's help and to the man that I am today. Thank you for supporting Global Mission. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought it was close, but I didn't know how close I was. Isn't that crazy? I cannot get around with my eyes closed. I need my eyes, and I'm so happy that God gave my eyes. 
but I'm also happy with people that are helping the blind to worship Jesus. Isn't that a great church? A church for blind where they open the doors so the blind also could worship God. What a great ministry. We can also help them with our offerings. Click on the link above and ask mom and dad to donate to the missionaries around the world at this time in Toronto, Canada for this church of, of blind. And not only that, but we can help other ministries around the world that are growing every day where, where people are helping others to know about Jesus. And if you can't help financially right now, it's okay. Let's remember them in our prayers. Okay? All right. So you must be wondering what this is. Ha! It's been sitting there since we started our program today. What is it? Well, you know what it is, their presence. I don't know how much you can see on the camera, but I'm going to bring the presence a little bit closer, okay? So you can see what it is. Look at this. What a cool present, isn't it? Whoa, this present is big. Look at the size of this present. This present right here is, is, is not so big, not so big, but hey, it's a present. It's a present. So um, why do I have these presents here? Well, I have to ask you a question. Let me ask you something. If you were to choose this present or this present here. I mean, this present is is almost, yeah, it's, it's, a, little, it's a little ripped, but um, I, I guess, I guess we were out of nice wrapping and uh, we just wrapped with whatever we, we had. Uh, anyways, so which one, which one do you want? Well, I don't know. Those are, I mean, this one right here looks pretty cool. This one, I don't know. This one looks like I have more stuff inside. I wonder what, what they are. Wow. Well, uh, I'm going to uh, put these gifts aside and try to see if I can open one at a time for you um, for you to see, okay? Uh, this one right here, I'm not very interested and I don't know if you want if you want to open this one, but right now let's 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 go ahead and open the nice gift. I wanna see what's inside. Okay? So do you wanna see what's inside? It looks like there's a lot of stuff inside and I'm so excited to open this. Are you excited? Do you want to see what it is? Okay, here it comes. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure that this is going to stay at a position here that you can see it. So here we go. Let's open our gift. Opening, 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 opening. I see a box. I see a box, I see a box, and I, I see, what, what, oh no, Ugh. ew, ew, yucca, do you want to see what it is, look at this, it's a whole bunch of trash, ew, Banana peel, oh, eggs, uh, paper, rotten fruits, orange peel, orange peels. Oh, ew, it smells so bad. Yeah. Ah. But wait a second. This this looks so nice. It looked so nice on the outside. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, ugh. <laughs> it stinks. Oh my goodness! Oh no! I, I, I'm so happy that you can't smell it at home because this is ah yucky. Oh no! And I thought that gift was a nice gift. Ugh. If that was a bad gift and smelly and stinky and full of trash, I I I wonder what this one here is. I mean, it's already all trashed on the outside look at it doesn't even have a, a nice wrapping 
Do you want to see what it is? Ugh. Oh no, it's heavier than that other one. It's heavier. And let's see. There's a little box here and a little opening. Let's see what, what this one is. Well, it doesn't smell bad. That's for sure. Oh. <gasps> Do you want to see what it is? Look at that. This one has a Bible inside. But wait a second. The wrapping was all bad and all yucky on the outside. And that one that was really good looking on the outside, all of a sudden, it was pretty bad on the inside and, and stinky and yuck. Let me show you. So, here it is. Uh, look at that. Look at, look at this. All that trash inside. Oh, no. And the other one that was all trash on the outside, it's actually pretty clean on the inside. Look at this. But wait. What does this have to do with our lesson today? Hmm. You can never judge things from the outside, from the appearance that is outside of the box. What really counts is what's on the inside of the wrapping. Just like here. We saw the nice gift with all rotten and stinky trash inside of that box. In the other box, we were able to pull the Bible out of the box. There's someone that is doing the same thing that I just presented to you now. And this is called the evil. Evil is wrapping something bad with a good wrapping on the outside. Evil is wrapping a nice gift, a nice present for you to think that there's something good on the inside. But in reality, that nice wrapping is only the outside. Inside, it's all rotten and smelly. On the other hand, some things may not look too appealing on the outside, but on the inside is where we find the treasure. The devil wants you to think that the nice wrapping is the best thing for you. But in reality, the content, which is the Word of God, is on the inside is what really help us get through life. In today's story, we are going to learn that the devil is trying to present something really nice to people. However, we can replace those rotten and bad things, those bad things in life, we can replace that with the Word of God, the true the truth is what's in the Word of God. And today, we will look on how to remove the bad things and replace with the good things and with God's commandment for us to have a good life, to live a better life. So let's pay attention to our story today and our lesson and listen to what the teachers are going to help us understand about the story of the Bible. Okay, so now we're going to sing our song of the day one more time, One True God, because in the Bible, no matter how it looks on the outside, how the wrapping is, inside is the one true God and what he wants for me and what he wants it for you.
Let's close our program with a prayer. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much because you are the one true God that we find in the Bible. Thank you because you have given us the instructions on how to live a better life. No matter how pretty things may look on the outside, we know that inside only the Bible, only your truth will help us through. Thank you for protecting us, for guiding us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for being a part of another Kids Connection program. I hope that we can get, get together soon and be a part of our Kids Connection program. Until then, have a great week. God bless you guys. Don't forget that this afternoon there's Parents Connection. Tomorrow we have Kid to Kid. And if you guys want to send us a message, let us know how you're doing. Send us an email, ddkidsconnection at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. God bless you. I love you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm glad to see you today. Well, we're starting a new month this month. And I would like to welcome you to Sabbath School today. I'd like to welcome Skye and Paul, Sunny, Rio, and Gia, Amy and Camden, and Reese. Reese, I think you're having a birthday this month. Happy birthday. Sammy and Carlina, Tyel and Aiden, welcome. Vida and Max, Caitlin, Ariane, Vashti and Moses, welcome. Estella, Jax and Janie. I'd also like to welcome Jade and Josiah. Josiah, happy birthday. I think you have a birthday this month. I'd also like to welcome Nicholas, Federico, and Francisco, Will and Mia, Andrea, Joshua, Joy and Jael, Luke and John. I'd like to welcome Cody and Benjamin, Aaliyah, Ethan, JR and Seth, Zori and her new little baby. Welcome everyone. I hope you have a good Sabbath school lesson today. Good morning, boys and girls. Our lesson story today starts out with Jesus. But we're gonna tell you in just a minute about that. First, I wanna show you these. Now, I have some money. Who would like to have some of this money? Would you like to have the fake money or the real money? Well, I think you probably would like to have the real money. Why would you want to have the fake money if you could have the real money? Now, we're going to talk today about some lies that are told that we might think are really true. But first, let's hear a story. Our story starts off with Jesus. When Jesus had been on the earth 40 days after he was crucified on the cross, he took his disciples out to a hillside and told them many things. And as he was talking, he gradually started going up into the sky until he got so small and went into the clouds and disappeared and they couldn't see him anymore. While they were standing there looking up into the sky, an angel came and told them that this same Jesus who went up into the clouds of heaven would return someday and take them to heaven with him. Wow, they were very, very excited about that and they hurried back to their homes to tell other people about it. They were telling many, many people about Jesus and how he was coming back to get them. And one person who did not believe that Jesus was really the Son of God was a man named Paul. Paul was a very educated man, and he loved to follow the laws that had been given to Moses, and he did not want to believe in Jesus. One day, he decided to go to another city and see if there were any Jesus believers there because he had been putting them into prison in Jerusalem. While he was on the road, a bright light shone on him. Now see if you can see this picture. 
a bright light. It was so bright that it blinded everybody. He fell on his knees and he cried, what's happening? And he heard a voice from heaven saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul said, who are you, Lord? And Jesus said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Saul said, what do you want me to do? And he said, I want you to go into the city and stay with a man there and wait for me to tell you what to do. So Saul got up and he was blind and could not see. His friends had to help him to get to this person's house because he was blind and couldn't see. Now Jesus sent somebody to tell him what to do and he followed what Jesus told him. He was to go and he was to tell other people about Jesus. Now Saul went around planting what they call planting churches or starting churches and he started a church in Thessalonica. But then he had to leave real fast because other people were not happy about what he was doing. They wanted to kill him. So his friends let him down out of the city in the middle of the night in a basket so that he could get away and be safe. Well, he was very concerned about the people who lived in Thessalonica. So he decided that he would send somebody back and check on how the people were doing. Paul sent a good friend of his to check on the church in Thessalonica. His name was Timothy. And when Timothy came back, he gave Paul, God had changed his name from Saul to Paul, he gave Paul a good report of the church in Thessalonica. And Paul wrote a letter to them. And it's called First Thessalonians. And in this letter, he encouraged them to continue to love and please God just as they had been doing. And he encouraged them to follow the instructions that God had given them and to keep on doing the right things that they were doing. Sometimes it's hard to do the right thing because people are kind of selfish. They like to have their own way. Sometimes we believe the lies that are told us when we watch TV or listen to the radio. Well, one lie that people want children to believe when they watch TV is that it doesn't matter what kind of TV shows and games you watch. Have you ever heard of a song called Be Careful Little Eyes What You See? It goes something like this. Be careful little eyes what you see. Be careful little eyes what you see. There's a father up above and he's looking down in love. Oh, be careful little eyes what you see. Sometimes the things that we see on TV are not really good for us. Sometimes a children's show might show violence. It might show the wrong kind of words that we're speaking unkind words to each other. That's one of the lies that people on TV want you to believe. You should keep your mind pure and not believe that you can do those kinds of actions and be violent and still be a good person who loves Jesus. And that's the number one lie. Paul told the Christians when he wrote them the letter that something that is pure is something that keeps our mind focused on God's goodness. God wants to see us being good and not watching things that are not good for our minds. When we allow bad choices in television watching or things that we look at to influence us, it is harmful to us and God wants us to be clean. That is one of the first lies that people want you to believe. Another thing that people want us to believe 
that Satan wants us to believe, that it is okay to hate somebody when they hurt us. I know we've all been hurt by other people, but we need to forgive other people when they hurt us. God has said that he will pay people back for what they have done, and we should not do it. We want to get even by saying or doing something mean or unkind to them. It's easy to feel this way, but when we love Jesus, we don't want to try to get back at people and pay them back. And besides, when we carry those angry feelings around in our heart, it hurts us more than it hurts other people. God wants us to only have kind thoughts and loving thoughts. Through the whole Bible, God commands us to love one another. And that means even the people that have hurt us. It may be a very hard thing to do to love someone who has hurt us, but God has said that that is the right thing and the best thing for us. Well, just because we forgive them doesn't mean that we think they did something that was right because it's not that way. God will pay them for what they have done, but they can also repent of what they have done. So we don't know how things are going to go with them. God has promised to take care of it, and he may want them to turn to him and do what is right. And if you make them feel that God doesn't love them, then they may never turn to God and do what is right. Well, a third lie that we sometimes believe is that it's okay to get other people in trouble. Sometimes we might want to tell on our friends when they do something and we know that they'll get in trouble, so we run to the teacher and we tell, we run to mommy and daddy and we tell on them. But sometimes it's not necessary to tell on them. There are times when you should tell, and those times would be when somebody is getting hurt, if somebody's being pushed around, if someone is being a bully, if someone is doing the wrong thing and hurting other people, then yes, you should tell. But if you want to go tell just because you want to get that other person in trouble, that's not a good reason to go and tell on them. There's a difference between tattling and telling for someone's own good. Everybody makes wrong choices, and we do it too. You should not tell on someone just so that they will be punished. We're sad when we get punished, even if we deserve it but we shouldn't be happy to get someone else into trouble. Nobody is perfect and we all make mistakes. We should pay attention to our own actions instead of tattling or talking about others. We should think about what we are doing. It is really easy to see what others are doing wrong and sometimes we don't see what we ourselves are doing wrong. So we need to think about our own actions before we go and tell on somebody else. Now, a fourth thing that people have told us is not wrong is stealing. Now, God has put in place a commandment that says you should not take what does not belong to you. Have you ever been in a store or at someone's house and you saw something that they had that you really, really wanted? Have you ever been tempted to take that thing? One time when I was a little girl, my cousin had a really pretty little necklace that I really, really wanted. So I took it home with me, but I felt really, really bad about it. And I told my mommy and she made me take it back and apologize. It's easy to be tempted to take something that you really, really want or like, but people should work for the things that they want. They should not take from other people. Work so you can buy what you need Paul instructed us as believers in Jesus to have work that we can do. God does not want us to be lazy and not have work. When we work hard, we will have what we need and be able to help others get what they need. Well, this is the month of August, and this month we're going to learn about how to walk or live in the way that God wants us to do. But we want to walk or live in God's truth. God's truth is always stronger than the lies that people tell us or the lies that we learn. 
As followers of Jesus and lovers of Jesus, we want to respect God with our thoughts, with our words, and with our actions. That is hard to do, but God has given us the Holy Spirit and the Bible to help us because we cannot do it on our own. The Holy Spirit will help us when we do wrong and encourage us to do the right thing. And the Bible, God's Word, is our holy guidebook to help us to know how to live. We want to, number one, keep our thoughts pure. And number two, we want to forgive others. And number three, work very hard at anything that you do. Well, Paul wrote the letter to the Thessalonians to encourage them, and it is in the Bible, and it will encourage us too. We want to walk worthy of the way that God wants us to walk. He doesn't want us to walk slow or walk fast. He wants us to live for him. Walk is another way of saying live. This verse was written to Christians and we will see how our thoughts, words, and actions matter to God. God has given us commands and truths in the Bible, and we don't have to wonder how to live for Jesus because his Bible will help us to remember. Now we're going to learn our memory verse, and it is from 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 12. Now I'm going to read it for you first, and then we're going to try to do some actions to go with it. And the first word is live. Now this is the action for live. Bring your thumb and your finger together like that. Live, and then good lives for God. It is God who calls you to his glorious kingdom. Here are the signs for the memory verse. See if you can follow along with me. So first, live good lives for God. It is God who calls you to his glorious kingdom. And that comes from 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 12. Let's try that again, okay? Let's go like this. Live good lives for God. It is God who calls you to his glorious kingdom. That comes from 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 12. And we will learn that a little bit more later. It will be the same memory verse next week. I want to talk to you about our craft, but first let's say a little prayer. Can you fold your hands with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for your Sabbath day that we can have to rest and enjoy your company. Please help us to walk and to live in the way that you want us to. Amen. Well, here's our craft for the day. And this is a picture of Paul's missionary journeys. I have colored Paul the same color each time. And here's Paul, and he is having the bright light shine on him. You can make that bright light yellow if you like. And here are all the different places that he went. It's kind of like a maze. See if you can get mommy or daddy to show you a map of all the different journeys that Paul took till he finally ended up in Rome as a prisoner. And he told everyone that he met about Jesus. He was hurt many times. He was shipwrecked and all kinds of things happened to him. But he said that he was following what Jesus had told him to do. And all of those things were nothing if he could go to heaven with Jesus. So this will be on the website. You'll just need to print it out and go ahead and color it. I hope you had a good lesson.
please try to remember this week to make good choices in everything you do. Bye.